Okay. This is an image, one of the football stadiums, soccer stadiums, as the Americans like to put it, in Qatar. Uh, and this is the final result. Okay, what, what I want to show you is something that I think is a very nice kind of trick, all right? So let me show you, and uh, let me start with the conversion first again, like so. Okay, I'm, I've already created the luminosity mass, I've already created the heart mass, etc. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is this uh, kind of uh, trick with the skies. It's a sort of stylizing the sky in a very controlled kind of way. So instead of uh, removing skies and uh, replacing it with other skies, I just don't like that. You know, I, I just really, it's, I'm really not the type of guy who likes to do that. What other people prefer to do, it's up to, to all those other people. I don't care. But personally, I like to use the information that's in my photograph as I shot it. Okay, so, and then sometimes you have the situation where you think that the sky doesn't look good enough, all right? So, for example, this sky here, it looks quite bright. There's not much of a detail in there. And, you know, if you want to make it more effective for the specific photograph at hand, then there's a lot of things that you need to do to make it look like this. Okay, but this is using the original information in the photos. I didn't replace it with another sky. I just used the original information. And I made sure that only the clouds and the light was visible just behind the stadium. As you can see here, it's, it's looking quite flat here as well. And But if you look here, you see that there's still a lot of information here in the sky and here in the sky. But I didn't remove those. Okay, so basically... What I did was the following. Okay, so how can you do that? How can you stylize the sky with the available information? So basically my point is the following. You can create beautiful skies with the original information that you have in your original photograph, as long as you know how and what you want. So I'm never replacing any skies. I'm never cloning out stuff out, out of the sky. I'm just using the information in my skies selectively. That's a different kind of thing, okay? So it's not cloning out things. It's not removing things. It's not adding things. It's just using the uh, available information in a selective kind of way. So, so what you can do, for example, here is the following. Okay, I can load the sky here. Okay, so I've loaded the sky. And now you can do the following. So I forgot to copy, uh, duplicate the layer. Okay, I've done it now. So this is a trick, okay? But it's a, I think it's quite a pure trick. So now you can go to Pro Adjustments. And now you can say, okay, I don't like it. Like, so I want to create a blank canvas. Okay, this is too dark, so I'm going to light it a little bit more. And you have to light it in such a way that you get the, the, the specific kind of mood overall of your uh, image that you have in your hand, if that makes sense, what I'm saying. Okay, so this, I think, is the kind of darkness that I want to have in my final image. So now I need to bring back the sky and all its details again, right? So what I'm doing now, Let's create a new layer. All right, I'm loading the sky again. There it is. Okay, and I'm going to find the luminosity mass that will reveal the clouds in my sky in only that specific section. So if I would use this, for example, then everything will be revealed, all those details, including those those annoying kind of brighter clouds that you see there that, that are very distracting, but also those busy clouds on the sides of the image. So I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to use something that's more like this. Lights 4 or 425. Well, let me have a look at 4.5. I think I like this one. Okay, 
to, uh, to get started with. If I want, if I need something lighter, I can always go back to four. So I'm going to use lights 4.5. Okay, let me go in here. So I've already created a new layer. And I'm going to load lights 4.5 in a sec. All right. I'm going to get rid of the marching ants. So, like so, I'm going to lighten it. Okay, let's say that this is enough for now. So what I'm going to do now is to load the sky again. Now do the restore from the sides and a little bit from the top because it's too bright over here. So I'm going to go to depth, do top to bottom. Okay, right to left. So get rid of those and left to right. So now you see it's getting starting to get some some details, some shape. And I want to have something like this. All right. So here, this is what I've done as a final result by using the technique that I'm using here. Okay, so now I need a new layer. Load the sky again. I'm finding another luminosity mask. Oh, sorry, it's the wrong one. That will reveal even more details and light. Well, actually more light than details. Uh, I want to have this part a little bit lighter. So I think I'm going to go with 3.5. Okay, that's what I'm going to use, 3.5. Okay, get rid of the marching ads. Build the tools lighted. I'll do the restore again. Okay, I have to do it now from top to bottom with the small. Okay, from right to left. But now, instead of a range of two, I'm going to do it with one. See that you see just a little bit of that, but without the busyness that you saw here. And do the same from right to left. Okay, so you see it's getting, I'm getting there almost, right? I mean, this is how you can stylize skies without removing skies, without replacing skies, but just using the available information in your photo selectively. And I've used it selectively. Right, and if you do this a few more times, you can get something like this. And this, for me, you know, I really like how this guy looks like because it creates a little bit of drama. It makes it more cinematic. Uh, yes, it's 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 it just fits that specific object, that specific stadium, and I really like it like that. And of course, you have to work on this part as well and great depth and uh, enough. Uh, contrast in the stadium itself but then you get to this and by the way this has a split tone as you can see I like to use into the mystic just to give it a little bit more of cinematic kind of drama so this is how we can do it and you can repeat this over and over again you can also add the darker tones to the skies by using the dark luminosity mask let me show you that anyway before we call this a day go to Uh, water values. Okay, so now I'm going to look for the dark luminosity mask. It will bring back some darker tones in, in the sky. Well, this is way too light. You could use something like this 225 or 275. I think 
is too dark, so I'm going to use 225. Okay, create a new layer. Okay, now I'm going to go in here, Pro Tools. And of course, now I'm not going to use the lighten. Now I'm going to use the darken because I'm using the dark luminosity mask to bring back some darker details. Okay, let's stop now and you can see what the difference is, right? It becomes even more dramatic. You see, basically you can create any kind of sky you like, that you prefer, a beautiful, aesthetic looking, stylized sky by using the available information that you already have. And if you think that your skies are overexposed, that you cannot do anything with it, Make sure to create luminosity mass first and evaluate those luminosity mass. And then you will see things that you cannot see without the luminosity mass, like uh, this kind of stuff, you know? I mean, you see that there's so much more information available than you would have guessed before you've used the luminosity mass. That also applies to the darker tones. Okay, so this is the trick. Uh, and I've used it on my entire commission project for Qatar. So I've created a new series of 24 stadium images for Qatar. I haven't published it yet uh, because we are creating a new limited edition book for that. So I'm waiting till uh, the book is finished before I'm going to publish it. Uh, but it's going to be a very beautiful book with uh, this kind of photographs uh, in the book, but also the previous series of Qatar in that book. So, uh, yeah, this was the webinar. So, uh, are there any questions till now? Yes, Gerald, I have one question for you. Let me guess. Is that Maxim again? Yes, yes it's me again. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when you did the first step and darkened the sky, did you lose all the information? Because I had the feeling that you lost all the information. Oh, no, I, I did. When you no. when you make it when you made it gray, Go yeah, ahead. of course. Here, yeah, here I lost all the information, but I brought it back. Okay, see that? Okay. So because that's the idea, because then you can bring back the uh, the information, the details uh, that you want to apply and to want to have selectively in your image. You can bring it back selectively, right? And this is the idea. You can just completely get rid of all the information. And the, the beauty of this is that you start with a sort of blank canvas, just like a painter would do, right? And then you fill it in with all the information that you like to have. So for me, this is basically the way that I like to work. I like to either remove all the contrast or just completely flatten it like so. So I'm not distracted by what I can do, by, by the information that's already there and what I can do with my image. So for me, it's a, I find this a very elegant kind of way of creating skies that are not uh, replaced because I, I really, really don't like that. Why would you replace a sky if you have the information in your photograph? I mean, for me, that's the, the, uh, the beauty of uh, photography. And of course, if anyone likes to do that, feel free, but uh, that's not the kind of way that I like to, to work. But I, like, I prefer to work like so. And, I see. And by the way, uh, by the way, uh, is there any chance that when you lightened and darkened, you didn't bring bring back some of the uh, sky and it left gray? Yeah, yeah. That's also the, the the intention. You know, that's why I said that I'm gonna restore it from left to right because then I brought back, I removed the details again, so I'm left with that with that gray canvas. You know that this gray canvas. Yeah, but uh, at the end, is there any chance that some of the gray uh, areas that, uh, that at the first step was total uh, without any information still left there? Do, do you understand me? Uh, well, the thing is, I can bring back all information. I, I can make this image completely black. 
as long as I have the original uh, luminosity mass, I can restore a photo just like this. Okay, so it, 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 it depends a little bit on how far you want to go. But if you want, you can bring back all the information, all the details in the sky. But that's not what I want. I just want to bring it back selectively. Else, I'm, I mean, there's no need to apply this trick, you know? Okay. Does it answer, does it answer your question, uh, Maxim? <laughs> yeah, I, I think what you answered is that, yes, you can. You, you did bring back all the information. That's why, that why I understand from your answer. Well, I I can bring back all the information, you but can. I didn't I didn't brought back I didn't bring back all the information. Okay, okay, okay. Now it's uh, more. Uh, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because if it, because if I brought back all the information, then the sky would look uh, very very busy again. And I like it that it is brighter just behind the stadium, that it has some more details behind the stadium, while it's a little bit flatter around the edges. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yep, all right. Mm -hmm.